Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm your host, Josh, aka Jam Moore, and welcome to another installment of Jam More Interviews. And today, folks, I have an extremely special show for you guys today. I'll be interviewing the voice of The Thing in multiple Marvel animated and video game projects, Samuel Stulinger in the Call of Duty Zombies franchise, Vortex in the Transformers Fall of Cybertron video game series, Devastator in Blitzwing and Transformers Devastation, Bubba in The Good Dinosaur, Awesome Guy in Doc McStuffins, General Alna in Star Ocean, Eckhart in Archer, Max in Poker Night 2, and Sam and Max this time is virtual, Republic Infantry in Battlefront 2, Doom Hunter in Doom eternal thor in the superhero squad show and the ultimate avengers films and y'all if i kept going we'd be here for hours just naming off all the characters this amazing man has voiced he has over 160 credits to his name and he's one of the most underrated but iconic voiceover talents in this industry please give a warm round of applause and help me welcome the amazing the versatile and humble david boat let's go baby yeah. Hey, Josh. How are you? I'm doing. Hey, fantastic. everybody. <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. It's so great. glad to be having you on. Oh, here. great to be here, man. It's it's so much fun. Thanks for asking me. Absolutely. I've been I've been me I've been wanting to talk to you for such a long time. I'm a huge fan of your body of work, and you know, before we get into the meet, I would just like to say it's an absolute honor and a privilege to ah. be able to be speaking to you finally. I'm a huge fan of your work. Been a major part of my childhood childhood with stuff like Kirk and Danny Phantom and Superhero Squad Show and Tough Puppy. You've just been a major influence on me as an artist and I'm a, even to this day and I'm such a huge fan of yours. So it's an honor and humbling experience to be bringing you on here and I hope to make an enjoyable and fun experience for you today, Mr. Boat. So yes. Thank you and good night. <laughs> you know, it's like, I can't top that. I got to live up to this now. <laughs> Holy cow. Who was that guy you were talking about? But <laughs> thank you very much. I, 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 I am I am touched by your your uh, your enthusiasm. Uh, it, I'm always shocked when anybody knows who the heck I am. Just period. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, you were. Yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, it's like, really? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I, I, I've done Comic-Con a couple few times and on panels and, and what have you. And I'm still stunned when I get asked to do stuff like that. Or if somebody approaches me and like, oh, man, I love this. And it's like, really? Oh, yeah, I did that, I guess. Huh? OK. So I'm always pleasantly surprised when I've, I've made somebody happy. And I'm looking at all these uh, characters up here that you, you put this beautiful poster together uh, for, for today. And uh yeah, there's a. I've been doing this for a while, I guess. So there's a few that are quite notable. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And it must be amazing to just look and pause and have people like me who want to reach out to you or say hello or something and just bring up to all this amazing work you've done. Like you said, you've been in so many franchises. You've been doing this for such a long time. I mean, you have a long resume to your name. So it just must be amazing to be like, wow, like I've actually done all of this, you know? Yeah, I've never seen them all together like this. It's, it's <laughs> kind of like a weird little family I've created. So, yeah. <laughs> Right, you got your aliens, you got a bunny, you have a talking yeah. rock, you got- Well, he's, you got a, he's a rabbity thing. He's not quite a bunny. He's a rabbity thing. That's what, how they describe him. He's a rabbity thing. <laughs> yeah, he's got Lagomorph. a cool voice too. I love the voice that you did for that character. It's so cool. It's like it's like a mafia type of thing. I don't know. It's really cool. I like it. There's a little Brooklyn in there sometimes. It's a you know, ow. It's more of an attitude. <laughs> it's kind of in the laugh. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I love it. But now let's dive into these questions, man. Sure. My, you know. When you say that you're surprised when people know you, you know, that's one thing I want to do is just be bring more awareness to the voiceover industry that deserves a lot of more credit than it's due. I mean, you guys are some of the greatest artists in the industry, period. Like you guys are so versatile and so talented and you just dive on in. And that's what that's what I love to do. But I also like to know a little bit more about the man behind all these iconic characters. <laughs> so my first question to you would be, if you had to describe your childhood in one word, how would you describe it? Wow, it might not be one word, but I, let me think if I can think of one and condense it down to one word, reduce it to that. Television. 
television television was uh when i was a kid if you if you watched mad men uh television used as a babysitter <laughs> that was everybody i know grew up uh in my era watching tons of television and there was no cable there was no videotape until i was almost graduated from high school uh so if it was going to happen it was going to happen on maybe three or four different channels uh you had that choice if you got i remember the day we got our uhf antenna on the back of our little black and white tv and the first thing that popped up was uh astro boy i'd never seen japanese animation before and it was one of it was one of the san francisco uhf and then you could look that up kids uh, uhf and vhf state stations um the uhf um smaller bandwidth you needed a different uh uh antenna to pick it up but they had all kinds of uh, uh really cool animated shows on the san francisco station that i'd never seen before including astro boy uh you know just tv was everything and nothing what it is now <laughs> you know uh talk shows there were it was one it was essentially just johnny carson that was about it um and if yeah if you needed to watch something it was after school or in the evening if you could sneak in and watch some tv i ended up getting a tv in my room fairly young so i was watching tv all the time and uh it was that and music and comedy records growing up that really got me going uh i was a, a typical case when it comes to voiceover person a distraction in the classroom let's put it gently me, i'm sure that my me. yeah <laughs> see my teachers had another description for me you know <laughs> uh, right. as i like to say uh voiceover is making my add pay uh, and uh so you know a, a, a bright student but easily bored and easily distracted and always looking to make a joke yeah yeah and uh, oh look a shiny thing you know <laughs> look at that thing if i liked it that's where my focus was going uh so that's uh that, you know so the hyper focus was there too so i you know i would like i said comedy records uh richard pryor george carlin uh <laughs> now a different kind of attitude towards uh but very formative uh bill cosby uh i had all those records man um yeah he's not as highly regarded now to say the least and for good reasons um but yeah uh, anything to do with fun and funny monster movies oh my god yeah monster movies real big deal and then came monty python uh and that was another case where there was no you had to watch it on sunday night this was in san francisco it was one of two cities showing it at the time when it was first out and my friends and i could recite having just seen it once for the first time pretty much recite what they were saying the next morning before class monday morning we'd hang out and rehash uh what we saw on monty python the night before and it was so amazing and bizarre and funny that you know it was indelible you know it was it was so formative for so many people I mean you look at people uh, who who speak of Monty Python and the glowing uh, Conan O'Brien any pretty much any comic who grew up during that era uh, even beyond that era when it was first on just having access to it Monty Python huge influence on just ev everything to do with my creativity on any level you know uh, absurdity a, a br embracing absurdity that it's that it's good to be goofy and it's it can be really fun and funny and thoughtful and smart and still be utterly absurd so when P monty python and the holy grail came out i saw it four or five times in the first week it was out in the theaters it's life-changing same with young frankenstein that's how far back i go um but yeah those two movies came out within like a couple of years of each other and monsters and comedy are you kidding that's I think two my two favorite things at the time throw those two together but yeah you know I had a good childhood uh you know like like any adolescent loneliness here and there and you know had to entertain myself and that's where you know uh 
focusing on mimicry and goofy and just like, you know, uh, hearing voices. No, wait, let me re rephrase that. Hearing voices off of the television. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's not to make light of anybody who's hearing voices. You have my sympathies. I've known people who have. Uh, but no, uh, thankfully, I, 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 I didn't have that um, that illness. No, I, I would hear voices and the ones that really made me laugh, I try to mimic them. And the and comic timing came with that as well. And the and the comedy records and watching comics on Carson. I used to watch Carson every night from like age 10 on at 11.30. It used to be on for an hour and a half to one in the morning. And I had to get up at seven. So do the math. <laughs> like I said, raised on television for better and for worse. But anyways, I'm yammering on here. I, I, I hope this isn't a uh, too long a... Uh, a spiel on what formed oh, no, me, you're but, fine. The, but but those are the things that uh, those are the things that got me going. I relate yeah. so much to 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 your growing up. It's crazy how alike we are in that sense. You know, I get bored easy fast. I just be like, ugh, let me do something else. Or I grew up like on animation. I love cartoons still to this day. I try to find a, a good cartoon that they're making here and there. Like I grew up on Transformers animated and 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 uh, George of the Jungle and oh, sure. of the older uh, '80s cartoons like Thundercats and GI Joe and and the Smurfs and sure. all these other things you know a lot of those things have helped inform me as a creative like transformers 2007 the michael bay uh the first one that movie's the reason like i want to be a, a, a director and a writer and an actor is because of that movie and oh, wow. uh, music you know when you talk about music you know lincoln park played at the end of that uh movie what i've done and that's uh, another reason i want to be a musician too like so much of my stuff has just come from a lot of these great films that have come when I came out or, you know, things I grew up watching, sure. waking up early to just catch that uh, that block of animation for Cartoon Network back in the day. If you guys remember, oh, yeah. I would always try and catch that. So, you know, catch a superhero squad show and <laughs> all these other things, you know, I would just catch these and, and the, that I relate a lot to that when you're like raised on television. I was as well. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that stuff is so. I mean, I, you got to say the Simpsons too. I mean, this the, the Bible of of modern animation. It still is great, and and I it's been on for so long. And I, I heck, I was a, a fan before it was even on the Tracy Ullman show as a short. I was a fan of of um, uh, uh, Matt Groening's uh, comics. You know, life and hell, and and stuff like that. That they'd be in the local, uh, uh, was it the uh, San Francisco artsy paper? I forget the name of it. Uh, SF Weekly. Uh, they'd be they'd be published in that, and uh, I had the books and everything. And then I heard, you know, oh, they're going to do a, a full animated series now, and from the get go, it was just crushing it, and just so in, so formative, and. I, to the point where I watched it for so long, so much, and had seen every episode like six times that I just kind of grew out and burned out on it a little bit and just didn't watch it for like five or six years. And then suddenly there was a five and six year backlog of episodes that I hadn't seen that which were great. I got back into it. It's like music, same sort of thing. It's like you, you get fully absorbed in an artist uh, and uh, in a band and then you listen to nothing but that and then I say okay I'm full of that and I go on to the next thing and you don't listen to that artist for a while and you come back to it and it sounds completely new so <laughs> yep yeah I know that feeling it's uh, it, it is an interesting feeling and you know speaking of music you know I find it interesting that you're an artist and an act well not an artist but an actor because you know that was never originally the goal for you you know you acting was pretty you know pretty recent for you I know you got into it in sort of your late 30s while you were yes. working with a band in the Bay Area and I'm interested you know what are some lessons you took from working with that band and how would you say that has sort of helped influence you as an actor uh, looking back on it, if you can. Sure. Uh, well, I think music, there are a lot of big music fans in the voiceover world, I know. Uh, having an ear for sound and tonality and pitch and cadence and rhythm, uh, acting in general, you're going to find a lot of musicians and music fans. Um, I think the two are related. Uh, and... I think just being exposed to 
great music and really absorbing myself, losing myself in it, uh, formed my comic timing as well. Because there, there is something, it's the blank spaces in between. That's where all the meaning is. If, 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 if it's just notes, it's just going to be, eh, you know, so it's the spaces that really make the music. And that's the same with any kind of comedic timing, any kind of dramatic timing, any kind of timing in general uh, falls into the music category. So to me, so much of what I admire with great voiceover performances and characters and iconic characters um, it has to do with how they do it. That is to say, not the, not the tone, not the sound, not the voice they pick, but it's the cadence and the delivery and the uh, dynamics, louder, softer, louder, softer, that everything working in symphony, literally, uh, that really make it. That, yeah, music is, um, I, I, I've heard that answer a lot when I ask people who are also actors, voice actors and musicians, they talk about like how they would do drumming back in bands and how that would influence just like paying attention and stuff. And to go back to what you're saying, like timing and how, how to hit this beat right and hit this tone right. So, or know. singing, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the, the human voice has so much to do with it too. You know, uh, uh, Tom Kenny heads a band. Uh, he has a, an R and B band, the Tom Kenny and the High Seas, and he, High C's, he is yeah. just yeah, he is so dynamic and such a great performer, natural entertainer, and singer, really strong singer. I mean, you think he'd be up there doing goofy voices the whole time? No, he is a huge fan of R and B, all kinds of music, but his band is like old school soul and R and B, sixties, fifties, sixties, seventies sort of thing and um yeah you can find clips online i'm sure but oh, uh, oof, he's... You know, he doesn't play an instrument but he can sing like nobody's business and knows where to put the emphasis and you know these sort of things carry over he has a tremendous skill with that and that's you know it's no accident that he is on every other show all the time you know he's really really good spongebob adventure time you know transformers animated oh my god the list goes on and yeah. on and on mr, oh, mr. rick and morty yes yo, look yeah, yeah <laughs> look y'all yeah. tom yeah. kenny is, is he's the dude yes yeah. as well as the, the the nicest human being on the face of the earth one of the sweetest people you'd ever meet so <sighs> the right guy got the job i say <laughs> yeah yeah, absolutely. But but you know, to go to talk about the nicest, you know, a lot of the times, a lot of voice actors, I just noticed how nice and how down to earth a lot of you guys are. And I wonder, you know, it's just so interesting and so refreshing to see that because you know we hear a lot of these gossip stories and blogs where they're like, this actor was awful on set and he's actually this and he's actually oh, that. Oh yeah, you know, Hollywood sort of crap. Yep. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, there is. I mean, it's a different. Uh, I mean, I've done a little bit of, I, I used to do a lot of uh, on camera commercial work back in the day. I've moved away from that. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's great to get the work. I just went on audition yesterday. Uh, but uh, it's a lot of work. And that's not even the theatrical end of things. Uh, that's a whole other deal. And a lot of stuff to deal with. Uh, that's not pleasant. There's a lot of competition. Um, you got to really, really want to put up with a lot to get 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 the work. And there's no guarantee you will get it. So uh, there's so much pressure and jumping through hoops and person to person sort of rivalries that can happen with that too. And you're dealing with narcissists, <laughs> not to say that voiceover people can't be narcissists. I've got my own level of it, I'm sure. Uh, so, um, you know, it, it, for whatever reason, that has something to do with it. I think it's just that, you know, you don't have to with voiceover, you don't have to jump through so many hoops with producers directors what have you it's like mm -hmm. if you can do it they like you they'll bring you in just to make sure they can direct you and then if you get the gig boom you're in uh you can go through four five six callbacks for even like a not even a huge role 
you know, a secondary role on a TV show or, or a film or something and, and then be told no. <laughs> After you were told, yeah, it looks like it's going to be you. Oh, no, it's not. I haven't had to deal with that too much just because I backed away from that. Uh, but I know all kinds of people who just, you know, the, the typical uh, quote is, this town's killing me today. <laughs> you know, it's just they got the bad news and it's like, oh, no. Uh, so it's just up and down and up and down emotionally. It's 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 a grind. Mm. But, you know, if you really want to do it, there's work to be had. With voiceover, it has been my experience as well. The people, generally speaking, are so down to earth and easygoing and supportive and happy for you when you get work and you can be happy for them. And sometimes yeah. I hear stories where they're like, they'll even like call you up and be like, hey, I don't think this audition is right. Would you want to do it? Like they'll even do that, you know? And exactly. So cool. Like talk to, your, talk to your agent, even get different agencies. Hey, look, uh, I read this thing today and pardon me, I had a haircut today. So <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the remnants of that. Um, yeah. You know, that's happened a couple of times where somebody will drop, I'll drop somebody's name or somebody will drop my name. Uh, and you get a phone call and said, Hey, someone so said you could, you could do the, pull this voice off. It's like, Oh, wow. Jeez. You know, it's yeah. That, that You don't get that as much in, in, uh, theatrical world. I don't think I can't speak from experience cause I haven't been deep into that, but that's the sense I get. Right. Absolutely. Like you said, a lot of competition, a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of a lot of background politics that go into it that, that can yep. wear on people. So Yeah, who you know, that sort of thing. And it's even mm -hmm. tougher for women. Yeah. Just ugh. say no more. Yeah. The, the Me Too movement couldn't have happened fast enough. Yeah. So, it, yeah. Uh, there's, there's, I'm glad there's a lot of ch good change happening uh, around around the board in the entertainment industry, whether it be like hiring more diverse people or creating more diverse stories and trying to get that pushed out more. I, I just love that. And I'm, I'm glad to see that change shift and to see things go from like you to more, you know, trying to be more authentic towards representation and bringing yeah. all these groups on here. And I love it. You know, Miss Marvel just came out on Disney Plus and just to see the Muslim community just so happy that they're getting a superhero representing their culture, you know, right. from what I hear accurately, that is just so heartwarming. I remember when Black Panther came out yeah. and we were up. Oh my gosh, that was such a good time just celebrating and just seeing the beauty that they created with Wakanda and Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace, you know, just creating mm -hmm. this amazing, like, I just love that. And I really want to continue to see that trend. And, you know, they, there is a lot of that coming down the pipeline. So I, for one, am excited. Keep it going, guys. <laughs> yes. Amen. Absolutely. So you've um, been in this industry, like you said earlier, you've been in this industry for a long time. You've done so many characters. You have a long resume. How would you say, in your own words, you've grown as an actor through this line of work? Hmm, excellent question. And thank you for referring to voiceover work as acting, because not everybody does. And I hate that. Sorry to cut you <laughs> off, but right. I just I just don't I don't like that. And I, I remember I was watching a video with I think James Otto Taylor was talking about it. He was like, you know, sometimes the industry, not sometimes he says the industry doesn't really seem voice acting as legitimate. They right. just, and I just that grinds my gears because like I said, not only speaking to you guys, but looking at your guys' resume and looking at some of the characters you've done, it's like oh, that's you like you know you guys are just so talented and on the mark and, and can do the work and it's just so upsetting when i when i see that or like with voice actors who created characters you know they get put into live action which they could perfectly do right. not get cast because you know oh they are voice over artists and that's not seen as legitimate right but yeah let's bring chris pratt in or freaking uh you know what, what's another big artist uh, leonardo dicaprio to voice this dog we could just get like deep star, star power star, star name power. sort of thing yeah i yeah. hate, oh, yeah. I hate that. <laughs> yeah you know it used to be easier to get like supporting roles in, in larger films like that but now they're just star packed you know uh and not and not all of them are bad i mean there's some really great great performances as well i mean some people are absolute naturals i mean you look at um big mouth holy cow uh comedians in general are, are i think going to be a more natural fit 
but yeah, comics, people dealing with improv and comedy. Uh, Bob's Burgers, another one. Oh, maybe my favorite show. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, just so many, many talented, funny people on those shows that the casting seems perfect. Uh, you know, John Mulaney and um, uh, 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 why am I going up on his name? Um, the, uh, the creator. Uh, um, it begins. Obviously, oh, yes, this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get old, kids. Uh, it'll it'll come. Nick Kroll. Nick Kroll. Uh, <gasps> they, you know, they were college buddies and they've been good buddies forever. Uh, and done improv and they're extremely funny guys extremely talented guys and and everybody else on that show is just so great so yeah it's they're just natural fits for for that kind of work right whereas you know and, and it can be the script it can be the you know if they're putting a ton of m money behind it it makes sense i understand but uh, yeah. compare the movie ants with the movie a bug's life which came out in the same year uh, one got super duper star power plus uh, and wasn't nearly as good as the other one who took a little more care in their casting. And yeah, it just really like really goes back to what I'm saying is like you guys are just you guys can do it. Like, you know, like when I see people like D. Bradley Baker or Fred Tattashore go into these characters, I'm like, what the f where did you guys go like they just fall yeah, yeah. into the character and i just oh yeah i love that i love that that's that's an amazing thing to witness you guys do fred's wow. a great buddy uh and and now living uh, not too far from me from what i understand but uh, he was gonna have a housewarming party and then COVID hit so oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. No. So i need I, I owe him a text to say like hey when are the burgers coming on? <laughs> I'm coming over. When when's this gonna happen? Uh, but, I interviewed uh, Fred at a at a convention. He was just so nice. He's just one of the oh, nice guys one, I've ever again, met. Again, one of the sweetest people on earth, and so talented. My goodness, it's it's no wonder he works every day. He's he's just he's amazing. And I and I, when I get to work with him, uh, which is ne never often enough, it's just you know we just scream uh for joy when we see each other and give you know we, I, I refer to us as the sweat brothers we're both kind of big guys and we were at the same we we're at the same agency and we would come out of the booth just again pre-covid we'd always be sweating like crazy and we you know had even our own secret handshake i think as the sweat brothers <laughs> yeah 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 Which, i mean you guys are like voicing these big characters so i can oh yeah you guys have to put a lot of work into produce these voices or especially oh. like a physical actor you know trying to get those punches like, yeah, yeah, you know oh, you're like moving yeah, that around stuff, to, yeah getting the and efforts like, yeah yeah we did we i remember being in a room with fred and maybe 10 other big guys we were voicing orcs for uh world of warcraft like a mass of orcs i think it might have been for one of their um cinematic things uh either advertising for, or for one of the cons or something like that um and the room got very warm very quickly because <laughs> it's like 10 guys my size just screaming ah! you know for a minute at a time and we're just lying on the floor in between takes it, it can be very physical depending upon the character it can be a real you know you bring in extra shirts and put them in the car for the ride home or maybe just take a nap before you start driving home so uh you know that's that's part and parcel to the uh the video game world especially because there's so much script to get through and so many you know it's hours and hours of gameplay and if you're a significant character and you have a big voice it's it's gonna take it out of you yeah definitely when i speak to voice actors who do video games or stuff like that or like uh, steve bloom i spoke to a while oh, ago, doing really? the voices yeah and he was um talking about doing sort of those bigger character roles and i was just like wow like goodness because he has to do like wolverine and oh yeah and and all these oh his uh, amazing I love him but he has a long resume too like yeah yeah that, that got guy to work with him a bunch on the uh, superhero squad we do, we all did you know a variety of characters and he had wolverine and he had uh oh i can't even remember but uh, several characters and almost all of them were big yeah <laughs>
<laughs> he has just such a natural, big, resonant voice. So, but to go back to my question, was the <laughs> did oh, I no. not answer it? Whatever oh, that was, right. <laughs> nobody's watching. It's okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fun. Oh, you know, I'm awesome. joking. Oh no, you know, I, lo- I like I said, I just love more. These interviews are more just like awesome conversations. Just having just having a heart to heart about your work you do and stuff like that. So go on a tangent I'm, I'm, here and there. Is, I'm in, I'm enjoying it immensely. What was what was the original question? But the original question was, how would you say you've grown as a voiceover artist in this industry? Grown as an actor? Yes. Yeah. Um, Good question. I, I I think just familiarity with how scripts work and how scenes work and what and getting a better line on what they're looking for, what they might need, um, getting out of my own way, getting out of my own head, just having fun, not getting nervous. I mean, these are things that just come with experience uh, above anything else. It's just like, yeah, I, I know what to do. I love doing it um i'm gonna do what i do and if that's not what they want it's not because they don't like me it's just that it's not what they need so doing what i do best or what i'm interpreting in the script is kind of what i lean towards uh sometimes it's different than what i think they're looking for and i'll so i'll give them what they're kind of looking for or what they're specifically looking for if i have an alternate take I'll put that as a second take, uh, like, hey, this works too if they have a Russian accent or if they're super silly or if they don't listen well, you know, you just change it up a little bit. If it works, do it. That's what I say. Uh, and uh, I've gotten gigs that way and, and you know, it, and it doesn't mean just do it for the sake of doing it. Uh, if I don't have an alt, an alternate, um, I can't think of anything. I'm not going to do it just for the sake of having a second take because that diminishes what I've done prior to it. So it's like, nah, if it's not going to be great and entertaining or better in some way than what I just did, then I'll leave it alone with just the one. Well, man, that growth and being more comfortable in skin in your skin and being able to better get what the creatives are asking you has led to an amazing career being in some massive franchises. And the first franchise I want to talk to you about is the Marvel franchise. Of course, you've played yeah. many characters in the franchise, most notably the thing and multiple adaptations. And of course, Thor. I'm interested, were you a fan of the Marvel comics or the shows pre working in the franchise? The original old school sixties reruns, of uh um thor and uh, i guess thing was there as well uh but yeah the marvel stuff uh from way way back the cheap animation <laughs> i remember that very clearly um and like this must have been yeah in the 60s and uh yeah thor in particular was my favorite of the bunch yeah he had the coolest theme song uh, and uh, I, I can't remember. Oh uh, no! I think Iron Man had a pretty, pretty cool one. I think uh, Iron Man. Oh, so did Spider Man. Spider Man had a great one. Oh, iconic, yeah, iconic. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was a so I watched that one too. I guess that was more second generation, uh, uh, even after those initial Marvel uh, uh, animated. And I got to play. I got to play with those. Uh, Marvel mashups. Are you familiar with those? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I was about to say oh, yeah. you did those too. I got to do a whole bunch of those with some very uh, funny people, and and it was that was a blast because those those are the ones I grew up on, uh, and being able to screw around with those and have some fun was was immensely satisfying. Yeah, I mean, you um, played tons of Marvel characters just through the mashup alone. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't watched those in a while. I should go back and check them out. They're they came uh, out a they're, while ago. They're about, I want to say they're about a decade old now. I think. Almost, yeah. I think, yeah, thereabouts. Probably at least six or seven years. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, there was a couple different seasons of them, I think. And the, I got to play a whole bunch, including Spider-Man. Uh, so that was fun. That was the first. Who doesn't want to be the webhead himself? Oh, my goodness. Please. <laughs> <laughs> it's like i can sound young okay i'll do it yeah more of that teenage uh youth thing love spider-man love spider-man 
what a great uh, character that you know has so many adaptations and iterations, and is oh, still yeah. going strong to this day, man. So oh sure, that sure, new sure. Uh, that uh, No Way Home movie was I I, lo- I love that one when I first you see the New Way Home movie I have yeah. you know I still haven't seen it I apologize it's something we could definitely talk about <laughs> and it's something I know I need to see because there's an and speaking of John Mulaney uh, 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 Spider Ham. Um, the, yeah, the, uh, no, that's the other one. That's, the that's Into the Spider Verse. Yes, boom, that's Spider-Verse. the animated one. Yep, Into the. Oh, that I haven't seen. Yeah, I haven't seen. I love that, that movie. Yes. That yeah, movie yeah. holds a special place in my heart. The animation, the voice acting, and I'm so excited for the sequel. That's I think it's coming out next year. They're talking oh, about right? how. Yeah, they're talking about how. Uh, each different dimension that they're going to go into each has its own unique animation style i cannot wait oh, great. i'm so excited for that i love seeing new i love seeing animation come together or different forms and you see what they look like in like a uh, 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 sort of like a japanese style with sort of style thing or you've seen anime. the bob's burgers episode with all the different animation i don't think i have oh you gotta check it out they had fans do and every time there was a different scene, it was a different style. Wow! That's... Yeah, it's amazing. It's really, really fun. Oh, I'm uh, about to check that out when I get off oh, of yeah. here. Hold on, yeah. <laughs> I'm so yeah. excited now. There must have been there must have been twenty or thirty different animators. So yeah, wow. it, it's just incredible. And then they had a mashup of a whole bunch of people who didn't make the the full cut, but that really they really liked the work. So yeah no it's 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 really amazing just to see whoa that looks different you know <laughs> completely out of the blue the voice acting doesn't change for it but the style the style changes dramatically from scene to scene <laughs> oh love that i'm yeah. definitely gonna have to check that out now you know you the i think the first marvel character you ever voiced was thor right right the uh, the original first two marvel animation ultimate films. avengers yeah yes yes uh and it was kind of a straight version of you know, a dramatic, a dramatic version. Uh, although we had some fun with the, uh, I think there were some extras in there where I got to goof around a bit. They let me do some improv with some silly stuff. Uh, but no, it was more of a regular down there sort of. I can't even remember. It's been so long since I've uh, those seen those. Those came episodes. out in two thousand and six. So yes. I thought it's been. A while. It's been a while. It's been yeah. a minute. And and Marvel Animation hasn't done badly. You know, they've they've grown a little since then. Um, but yeah, both those were, uh, were really an honor to do. I mean, I knew it was like, oh my goodness, what they're so, they're really going for it here. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do it. Yeah. Of course was the, the next time we would divorce stories in the superhero squ- uh, squad show. So I'm interested, what was it like switching from a more serious dramatized project for Thor to a more lighthearted kid friendly type of Thor project? <laughs> uh, and goofy for sure. Yeah. Um, it, well, it was very different uh, um, and, mo- and more up my alley to be f- fun and funny. Uh, not, not that I don't enjoy doing, you know, kind of the straight ahead dramatic uh, what do you call it? Uh, narrative uh, that comes with the first two uh, Avenger films, uh, but just, just and just being in a room full of crazy people every week. I mean, it was, uh, and it's where I really got to meet some of my real uh, heroes: Steve uh, Bloom, Charlie Steve, Adler, oh Chuck, good old Tom. Chuckles, and uh, <laughs> uh, Tom Kenny. Uh, Tom Ke- yeah, Captain America. That's, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's where I really got to know him quite a bit. Uh, and um, uh, uh, my friend Travis, Anthony Del Rio was yeah, a reptile. Yes. My yes. Boy, if you're watching this, yeah, I, yeah. I, I oh, he's he's too. so great. He was just a kid in high school. Um, and he was doing uh, the Disney stuff too. On top of that, he was big yep. into the Disney Channel stuff, like Hannah Montana and yep. all that type of stuff. Yeah. Oh, and then we'd have you know guests drop in. We uh, you know we uh, it just Stan was Lee amazing. was there. Stan Lee came through. Yeah, he would tell all kinds of wacky stories, and he would do uh, his uh, mayor of Superheroville or whatever it was. Uh, and um, it, yeah, it was just a, a, an amazing time. I think it was two seasons. Uh, and it was every Wednesday morning. We just had a big laugh riot, you know. And oh, and then uh, you know, uh, um, um, Great Alisle um, and uh, uh, yeah. Tara Strong, uh, Cree Summer. I mean, just you know, just all these people. No, you're working with my heroes. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was every week. Every week, you know, and just and then they'd let us add. Oh, uh, 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 Travis Willingham. 
uh, it was Thor, also uh, went was, on to was, voice uh, Thor himself. Yes, he was Hulk uh, was in, on that show. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was just every week, just knocking each other over with fun, uh, and they let us improvise quite a bit. So, yeah, it's awesome, like if we man. saw a room for something silly, they really let it. They had they had loose reins. They said, you know, here you go, just go nuts and so we Keys do it to the city <laughs> yeah do it as written and then just well whatever feels right so yeah no i was very I would imagine sad. for a silly and goofy show like that they didn't let you guys have a little bit fun i mean you guys oh like, yeah a lot of you guys have a comedic background i mean some of the people who worked on that show were stand-up comics themselves at one point so sure you know sure. of course they're gonna be able, they're gonna be bringing that wacky kooky humor improv type stuff to the show so i'm glad that they let you guys get to play around i know it must be an amazing experience for not just that but any project in general to be able to just like have fun with the directors or make them oh, yeah. smile or make them laugh on anything and just to see them like i got you <laughs> oh absolutely especially if it's a kid a character that is recurring in any way it, it, video games you get to really stretch it out i mean uh, uh, uh stullinger or stullinger however you want to pronounce it they, that's another place where they let me have a loose rein you know and let me say all right you know what else do you see here if i have an idea they were they were okay to let me pitch it to him it's like how about if he says this instead you know uh so yeah it, it's it's so you have so much more invested in it when you get a chance to contribute that way. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a form of writing, you know, it, it's just getting to create the character and what they say and having a sense of what they say. And if the, you're trusted to make a suggestion, it's that much more fun. Right. And I, and I could imagine that tape would be so much more richer and fuller because it's like, all right, I know the character. I understand the character. What would he say in this scene? I know this is what this is run, but let me try this. And then they're like, oh, OK, I like that. You know, and they're like playing yep. back and forth at you. And oh, that sounds so much fun. That's why I want to be a voice actor, just doing that and experiencing the range and then being able to change my voice and just play around and be like, hmm, let me, you know, because I would imagine with on camera to talk about that a little bit again you know it's it's i feel like it would be more a little bit more stricter you know what i mean it, it can be i mean yeah. it depends upon the director and the script and everything too uh, um uh, but there's i mean you look at um stuff like uh talladega nights all the uh um, all that goofy stuff with will ferrell and uh uh john c Riley. uh tons of that stuff is improvised uh or they're or they're being thrown lines uh on on the spot they like, try it this way try it this way i mean you've probably seen the outtakes of them trying to keep a straight face it is hilarious <laughs> i love that i love seeing yeah. outtakes and just bloopers of them just like messing around on set and just seeing everyone just like fall out i love that stuff see oh, people yeah. just like laugh and giggle it's just like so 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 it's such a nice feeling you know oh sure um, but to go back to the Marvel thing, of course, I'm going to get yeah. into the other T hero you voiced, the thing from the fan. Ah, yes. Before. The thing. <laughs> I love I love your voice for that character, man. I'm a, I'm a huge Fantastic Four fan at heart, and I love the cast that uh, Disney has recently done. You know, you have Robin Atkin Downs as Mr. Fantastic, you as yep. the thing. Um, who versus the Human Torch? I feel like they changed the Human Torch and uh, Invisible Woman voice actors yeah, I can't, a lot. I, honestly, I can't remember. It, it, it was a little while ago. But, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the thing is one of my absolute favorites and, and as i mentioned uh, uh when we were speaking earlier uh it's my uncle joe essentially from brooklyn uh, uh his his expression uh he was a shorter guy and he's uh, uh, the history behind him is pretty incredible but uh just a short little unassuming guy and and i was i was his height by the time i was like 12 years old <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was a big kid, uh, but he was a shorter guy, uh, and he uh, and he'd say, "Hey, shorty," <laughs> you know, he'd call me shorty, uh, sarcastically, ironically, um, and uh, yeah, but that's just that's how he spoke. That was his his natural tongue. Uh, yeah, how you doing? Oh, what's going on? <laughs> you know, yeah. Oh, and yeah, it's yeah. helped inform a fantastic voice. Do you remember the first time you were cast as the thing? And what did the original audition call for? 
it might have been a superhero squad show and they, it just he came up in the uh he might have come up it was was it there it must have been I think yeah, he it was. was there yeah the thing yeah was yeah there. yeah mm-hmm. uh, and uh it was just sort of written into the script and they handed it to me and said do this <laughs> so uh they figured I, i'd come up with something and that's what i came up with because it was just so uncle joe and i was familiar with the backstory on thing and uh um you know being a a real new yorker so uh it, it was a natural choice for me as with uh, you know the mayor on um clarence clarence that's my dad essentially like a hyper version of my dad oh, hey you know, that kind of nervous energy you know it's, it's actually a voice i used to use to to cut people up uh in between takes on the superhero squad show i used to do an impression of my dad and tom kenny especially found it very funny so yes i sort of worked that sort of uh exaggerated version of my dad my dad's still around 95 is my dad uh he's still around doing well you know lost a little off the fastball uh, uh with the memory but uh you know but he's still very healthy and and doing well and uh living up in the bay area near my sister's place so yeah i'm gonna be up there again in july to see him but yeah he that's that's my dad essentially like oh oh, oh, positive positive everything's good okay hey okay everything's wonderful all right then let's uh let's just keep it moving (laughs) another silly favorite voice of yours that you've done huge class fan i remember watching that show when it first aired such a such a fun show that's a- it's very special yeah no it's it's just goofy as can be but yeah uh and working with the just unbelievable i mean katie crown worked on that show she's now uh uh chief of uh, she's one of the head writers and supervisors at bob's burgers and has written a number of episodes she's wow. a, a a co-producer yeah and of course tom kenny uh the amazing uh, uh eric edelstein uh whom you should interview as well <laughs> you'd, you'd love eric uh um i can introduce you to eric uh we have become very good friends and again through music we have very similar music musical tastes and he is he's also he, you know he was the boy uh clarence mom's boyfriend hey <laughs> yeah yeah he's all who is and, and eric is also now uh the dad on baby shark and he was grizz on we bear bears yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Why did I not know that? Oh, what he was the, the heck? Mayor, he is mayor, mayor uh, uh, on a few episodes of American Dad. Uh, the, the mono, the, 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 not the monorail. Was it the monorail? Yeah, it was the monorail uh, episode um, amongst others. But yeah, no, he's he's an amazing character and has, done, has had huge success on camera as well uh get like being eaten on uh the most recent not uh, iteration the the the, re- the reboot of um Jurassic Park he's the guy he's the he's the the guy uh uh eating potato chips who leaves the door open and the monster gets out he's the he's the security guy who gets eaten you <laughs> this is so cool this is yeah. what I'm talking about this is what I'm yeah. talking about that's so cool oh yeah. my god that's and so he's cool. just he's a, he's a, he's I call him my little brother he's he's like about six six he's this big guy Jeez. but it's just a big 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 teddy bear he's just the sweetest guy in the world yeah I'm thinking because I think the tallest voice actor that I know is Travis Willingham like that guy is he's he's oh. he, he's probably six two he he and I he might be six three I'm I'm about six two uh but oh, okay. eric towers over me yeah no he's he's a big guy imdb got your uh, uh your height wrong what did they say your height was they said it was like five something i was like oh really yeah, oh, yeah they- <laughs> that's wrong <laughs> not, i'm not vain about it but it's like that's no I'm, i've been over six feet since sophomore year of high school that is so cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> but from a character perspective what is your favorite thing about the thing? Um, that he's so easy going. Well, he's easy going to a degree, but he's just such a regular guy. <laughs> you know, there is clobber in time. Uh, but, you know, other than that, you know, let's go, let's go bowling. You know, let's go have some fun, which would be my uh, my uncle as well. You know, 
hey, shorty, we're going to go see the Harlem Globetrotters. You want to come? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, uh, he's, he's just such a regular Joe, you know, nice. just such a regular guy, the nice. guy you can hang out with. Just don't yeah. piss him off. Yeah, don't. Obviously, he's a real crush. You. <laughs> Stay on his good side. Yeah. The thing is such a cool character that I love from the Fantastic Four. And, you know, it's just been really upsetting to see. Actually, you know what? The first Fantastic Four movie that came out in uh, 2005 with Michael, um, what's his name? Chickless. Chickless. There you go. Boom. And who did I used to see thing? him at the market. Now, he's the shorter guy. <laughs> I mean, not not petite, but you know, he you know, he has a big voice and a big presence. You know, he's very stocky, strong, uh, 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 but shorter than six feet for sure. The, the, that's the only thing that uh, movie that's really gotten the thing right. In your opinion, of course, we have a Fantastic Four movie in the works coming out. Who knows when, but we know it's coming down the pipeline. In your opinion, from someone who's gotten to spend some time in the big orange man skin for <laughs> just a little bit of time from various sure. video games and animated properties, what do you think they have to get right for the thing in order for him to be successful in the movie? I think he's got to have a good heart that he's kind of a gentle giant, you know, and, and, and at heart, he's a pussycat, you know, he, he's, he's a, he's a sensitive guy, but he's just in this massive form. And when he needs to use it, he has no hesitation in using it. Uh, he doesn't look forward to, well, he looks forward to dispensing justice in his own way, <laughs> but it's the bad guys he's after. And other than that, he just wants to, you know, have a few beers, go bowling, hang out, and uh, have some fun with his friends. I'm it, glad you know, this year. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just keeping a keeping his heart true and keeping his sensitive side available. I think is is important. I'm glad that you look, man. I'm glad that you you understand the thing so well and what the character is. I love that. And um, I look forward to hearing you in more projects as this one of my favorite Marvel characters. Really hope to get him right in the movie. Please don't uh, mess with this movie. Please yeah, they got to get it right. Yeah. They have to. Like, yeah. Because the I remember the one that came out in 2015 and how... That was bad, and just yeah. you know, even though I love the earlier films, you know, there are things that could be tweaked about it. Why? So I really get this right, guys. I'm like, this is your last chance. Come on, <laughs> it's your last chance. But you know, Marvel is a huge franchise, of course, for with movies and live action TV shows now with Disney Plus. It's a huge franchise. But another huge franchise you were a part of is Call of Duty, of course. Sammy oh, yes. Stoolinger. What yeah, a yeah. character. Another character that's made up my childhood. I remember playing the game and I was just I was just like I I really like I really I think you're my favorite of the Victus crew oh. is Stoolinger. I really love I love your voice and how you make him sound like really angsty and really well, all over the place. Well, he's, <laughs> he's in he's in over his head. Head. I mean, yes. he, he probably, I mean, I always saw him as somebody, uh, even though he worked for the CIA and he's been through all kinds of missions that everybody around him who knows him is like, how is this guy still alive? You know, he's just, a, just fraught with anxiety constantly. He does not keep a cool head. He's just always on edge, <laughs> but has a will to live. You know, uh, th that seems to be that seems to get him through the the, the tough times. Uh, and a little bit of zombie flesh on the side. Just a oh, little, oh just yeah. A little well, bit. might be human flesh. You know, yes. yeah, who knows? You know, <laughs> you never know. What an interesting thing they did with that character. But the oh, first time man. you were ever introduced into Call of Duty was actually as an additional voice. Call of Duty World War II in 2008 as yeah. a Russian soldier. Russian soldier yeah. number one. <laughs> yeah. But I'm curious about the additional voices process. Because when I usually think of auditions, I think you guys are auditioning for like these side characters that have a lot of meat and stuff like that but then i see a lot of you guys' work is composed of like additional voices or soldier right. number one or or, or monster right. number three you know so how does that go do you guys audition for additional voices just as you would regularly audition for characters or more is often like than not yes uh, okay. it, it, sometimes it's if a director knows you and knows you can knows that you know knows that you can do it and they don't 
have to, sometimes it's a time issue. Like we don't have time to audition a whole bunch of people. I know that so-and-so can do this. Let's pull them in. Uh, and you just get called in. That's always great. Uh, but more often than not, it's no, they, 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 they'll cast for sometimes two or three different characters and you might not even know, <laughs> you know, they have, they have code names for, uh, different yeah. productions and stuff mm -hmm. now just for, for non-disclosure agreement stuff and to keep things on the, on the down low. So it doesn't, you know, uh, but then you, you show up and it's like, you're talking to Batman. It's like, oh, <laughs> what is this game about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's called Zeppelin, but it has nothing to do with Led Zeppelin. <laughs> right. yeah. Or Nazi or, guys or, or like cars. Yeah, it's exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I've, uh, I remember speaking to Roger Craig Smith, and he was talking about Batman Arkham Origins, and he was talking oh yeah, about that's the one. Yeah, he was like reading a line because it was under a code name. Of course, they don't want people to know it's a Batman game. And I think he that was, was Zeppelin. <laughs> Yeah, what? Yes, yeah, because you were, one. you were, um... I was a cop, I was... I was yes, uh, Officer Owen. Yeah, right. and then there were two other characters I did as well. They get yeah. three for the price of one, so... <laughs> the, the, when, when it's peripheral characters and you haven't been cast in a main role, you know, if they know you can do it, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. We've worked with Dave before, let's get him in here. That's so... Oh. And, Ro and Roger, good Lord, there's another guy with a resume, just... And he's out in Idaho, you know, taking pictures of birds. It's, I know, uh, I follow him, and it's just like a picture He's an incredible space. photographer. My Shit. goodness. I, he's the reason I have a camera in my room right now. Yep. That, I, yep. that I go out and take pictures and try. He's just so crazy, and I've just gotten to sp speak to him uh, off the air in the interview. He's just so nice and so awesome. He's just oh. so talented. And, and Yeah, and there's another guy I met on. Uh, I mean, I'd worked with him before, but I got to know him much better on Clarence. He was on Clarence quite a bit. Yes, he was Benson, right? That was the character's name. I, I think, think it was. I think so. Yeah. Started yeah. with a B. Yeah. yeah. What? What yeah. a what a what a guy. But you know, Stuhlinger is this character that you you know is is a part of this bigger crew called the Victus Crew, and just adds a lot of dynamic to the to the um, the, the group. Um, back to back up a little bit. How did you find out that you booked the role of Stuhlinger? Were you sitting in your room? Did they call you? Email? Text? I, you know, the occasional I, bird mail. I, I, <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I, uh, I don't remember exactly where I was. I do remember uh, auditioning for it, and much as I described how I always saw him, that's kind of that's kind of how I played him out of the gate. Um, I remember it was two or three days of work consecutively, and it really wiped me out. Uh, and uh, they learned from there. It's like, yeah, let's maybe make it every other day <laughs> so uh when i and i was so pleased with how it and everybody else was with how it came out and then so in, a, in another iteration of the game he's back and then this most was it the most recent one or the one just prior to it with, with black ops uh, 4 yeah the, the ghost version on the phone and and what have you where i'm in uh uh rick toffin's head have you ever met yeah. nolan north oh yeah we're at the same agency uh and uh he, he's he is a character. Oh my God. Another hugely talented and versatile guy. Um, but just funny as can be, uh, his, his version, uh, his, uh, Christopher Walken. Uh, I don't know. If I've heard it before. Him. He's done it in like a couple interviews. I've watched of his. I'm just like, dude, you're that you're awesome. <laughs> you're awesome. He's really good. And just a, just a cut up. He's another one of those guys. who's just constantly funny. We're, uh, you know, back when we used to audition, in person at the agency and hopefully we'll be able to do that again because that was part of the fun of the, of the hanging out you know we just if you're waiting for an hour to get into the booth you get to like hang out and just be goofy with really interesting people and really goofy people and he was one of my absolute favorites to to hang out with and he's yeah. big too now with the uncharted movie he was oh my in God. and i was yeah. like that was so awesome to see so is guy. he in is he in the uh, uncharted movie he is, yes. He oh, is. oh as a character. Mm -hmm. He has a, a cool little cameo role. He's like sitting on the beach talking to Tom Holland's uh, uh, Nathan Drake. Wish I would have gotten uh, Richard to do a cameo, but I guess not. Whatever. So, I know, you know. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. 
is what it is. But I do think it's cool. I don't know. I just wish they would do that more with cameras because, like, just recently it just announced for the Last of Us TV show that Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson just got cast in the move. Like, the oh, show. great. That you know, right. that's so cool. I would love to see you know voice actors like you get a chance to come on and do like a small cameo, like you're in the Fantastic Four movie, and the thing is like what's sure. going on, and you just oh, like, and you know around. Roger Craig Smith uh, as um, I mean the, the uh, Sonic, Sonic, you know, I mean, granted, uh, uh, Ben Schwartz, is Schwar- Ben Schwartz is amazing, you know, one of the greatest improvisers and funniest people and nicest people on the planet. Uh, I understand the attraction and, you know, you know, a demographic poll with all his, uh, you know, work on the office, et cetera. Um, so, but yeah, give Roger a shot. <laughs> you know, they got Colleen back as tails. I mean, Roger could be like something. I don't know. Please. Yeah. Sega, do something figure it out. Out. Yeah, yeah. I would love that. Yeah. But um, for Stoolinger, did you ever watch the trailer for the game? I don't know. We're about to pull it up. Hold on. Oh, man. heck. Very so, good. Hold on. Let me change this. So, guys, I, I, I'm, this is going to be David's live reaction if he doesn't remember seeing it. I might have to take it out because YouTube is weird with copyright. But let's see what. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's see. Okay. And, we should, and what is this? The um, For the, the first. Call, yes. The first Call of Duty Zombies trailer ever. Ever. This is the first well not ever, but it was the first one for your characters, period. Like, oh Black Ops first- 2. Yeah. Yes, Black Ops 2. All right. So I'm about to you can see it? Yeah. All right, about to play it in three, two, one. Do you remember any of this? Oh, I do. Okay. All right. Well I mean I mean, maybe I just remember the scene with the bus, but that might have been a cinematic for the game yeah that's and, and nolan you know nolan is the uh, bus driver the bus driver yo when i found that out, i freaked out i was like what <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> nolan's a lot of Call of Duty characters he's also oh, really yeah. in uh, the alcatraz map and stuff there he goes oh there i am Yo, <laughs> it's so cool to see it. This is so cool. I remember when I was looking up this trailer and I just uh-huh. felt so nostalgic. It's insane. <laughs> this song, too. I love this song. The Band Sevenfold is my favorite metal band of like uh-huh. all the time. That, that part right there used to make me mad because you'd have to like kill like these do- uh, demon dog things. Oh, yeah. So hard. So hard. But it's crazy to see how uh, the reaction to the Victor's crew has changed. I remember, well, this is about to end, but I remember the initial reaction to Victor's crew. It was uh, it was interesting. Were people not into it? Hold on. Yo. <laughs> so, so I remember. You get the blood spatter. <laughs> right, yeah, they do that for all the trailers uh, at the zombie zone. They're like, Call of Duty, zombies, and then the blood, and the zombie comes up. But I remember the initial reaction of Victus Crew because we were so uh, uh, t- uh, tuned in to Primus Crew because that was Rick Toffin, Tank Dempsey, Nikolai Belensky, right. and Takio, you know, Tom Kane, Fred, Steve, and Nolan. And we were so yeah. used to hearing them. And then we came to the Victus Crew. And I remember. Little little old Josh was like, ah, I hate Victor's crew. I hate all of them. Bring them back to the originals. But you know, as I've gotten older and I've come to appreciate the different uh, cast that has come along. Of course, in Black Ops 2, you guys weren't the only crew. Then there there was the Black Ops uh, Alcatraz map, and that was a completely right. different crew oh, yeah. uh, than than your guys. So I've come to appreciate, and especially Stoolinger as a character, uh, his role in there. And I just, um, you know, I love Victor's crew, and I was so happy. I was like, wait. What are they looking at in it for Black Ops 4 the trailer when they were looking into the um 
frozen tubes. I remember playing yeah. the game. I was like, oh, no way, they didn't just do this. And I just saw you guys in those tubes. And I was like, yo, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so excited to see you guys come back. And I really do hope that, you know, as we're getting more track zombie stuff and I'm hearing in interviews that they're making uh, Craig Houston, and I, I forgot who else it was, but they're continuing to work with track to make the zombies uh, storyline bigger and bigger. Right. I really do hope they can find a way to bring you guys back. Oh, it'd be so much fun. I mean, it's so much fun to do. So, yeah. And that's both. That's an opportunity again, where I just got to riff and just and, and it's so much fun to have an audience. There'd be like a director and a writer or two in there. And I, I know I'd hit a nerve. I get I don't hear it, but I could see them just cracking up in the other room through the window you know because you know the screen would be here and they'd be over uh, on one side here and i could look over and like oh yeah okay i got them yeah. <laughs> so yeah i guess that's a keeper yeah yeah man and soldier has such iconic lines in 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 the thing in the game and just throughout the maps because how many maps are there? so it's transit die rise buried am i missing one no, I think I, you guys were just in those three I, ones. I, I yeah. think it's three, yeah. Yeah, it was just those three. Yeah, Transit, Die Rise, and uh, Buried. Love Buried. I think that one is so cool. You guys are just falling down into like this Western underground town. And then that's when they introduced all these cool weapons like the Red Gun Mark II right. and right. this uh, Western looking pistol. <laughs> Give me a thing. good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, going to the mystery box. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess this will work. Yeah. <laughs> He's. Hard to please is old uh, Sam. <laughs> yes. I, I, I just love the little clips where they're like, hey, you know, we're running out of ammo player. Do this or da, 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 da. We need, oh, I need ammo or something like that. And I just, I just love the funny little takes that we get or like when uh, Dempsey's breaking the fourth wall and is like, hey, why don't you just drop the chips and give me some ammo because the gun is about to run out. Like, I love stuff like that. So yeah, much yeah. fun. So much fun. Yeah, um, the, writing, the writing was really fun. Oh, yes, the writing is is really cool, and it's really crazy to see how like God, Call of Duty Zombies as a franchise has evolved. Because, like I'm saying, you know, like I said, Craig Houston is still writing away and making new stuff, preparing for the new Call of Duty to come out, and right. just continuing to build and build a build on, on top of this, and how there are different crews, and then there's different dimensions, and yeah, there's oh, a whole it's, it's in infinite. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It really is. And there's just so much that goes into it. I'm really, like I said, so excited because I think Zombies, personally, for me, is like my favorite side mode in like video game history, period. Because there's just like oh, wow. so much lore to it. And it's so much fun. And especially playing with friends. Yo, I <laughs> I remember playing with my cousin and we used to do a uh, dual screen and we'd get mad at each other because I let him die so I could go get a gun and not die and he'd lose <laughs> all of his weapons. <laughs> yeah, that's so, great. Go, good times, good times, man. Love, love the Zombies franchise. What do you like about what Stuhlinger adds to the crew? There's so many different personalities, so many different people. Well, he's the um, live wire, yeah. you know, uh, unpredictable uh and always full of energy you know whatever whatever he's into is gonna be <laughs> there's gonna be some panic involved uh so and he's and he's funny he's a goof you know uh and he's super insecure you know so he's yeah yeah uh he sees himself as a good guy but he's never quite sure enough of him he's never that sure of himself right I'm so excited. I love that character. And when I find out, I got to ask you this. Were you shocked when you found out like he was hearing Rick Toffin in his head and that he was like eating flesh? Like what was it? Uh, well, yeah, that, that was it. It was an eye opener. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, it's one of those things where I don't get the script ahead of time quite often. And it's just as we're reading in the studio and it's like, what the hell's going on? The, the, the director will describe like, okay, so... <laughs> As it turns out, you may or may not be a cannibal. So I was like, really? Okay. Wow. I might want to go back and address a couple of lines a little differently, but yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So and of it, course yeah. you did. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's just that much more to play with. It's so much fun. 
It is, and I really love what they did in Black Ops 4, where it's like flipped. Now, Stuhlinger is a Rick Toppin's head in that in that Alcatraz map, and we see him say all those funny lines, like "What a oh, kick yeah. in the dick!" and that was all a, that, was a, <laughs> that was on the, that was a, an ad lib. That was one I thought, like, well, you know, it seems to make sense. Are they, and that's where they really were cracking up in the other room. And I said, "Are we going to be able to keep that?" It's like, "Oh hell yes, we're going to keep that." So it's like, yeah, that is. Well, Call of Duty is a, a massive franchise that's meant a lot to me, but a franchise that will always be in the world to me. I said this earlier. Transformers, if you cannot tell. Yeah, I Transformers tell. friend, Megatron, <laughs> Megatron, Megatron, Grimlock, massive Transformers fan. And of course, you played this little guy right here. Vortex and Transformers Fall of Cybertron, baby. Yes. I love, I love the, I have all of the uh, Bruticus Combine this here, Onslaught, Blast Off, Brawl, Swindle, and of course, Vortex right here with his little blades. Um, I am interested, were, did you ever watch Transformers or the movies or the cartoon growing up? Or Honestly, no? not so much. Not mm. so much. You know, uh, 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 they gave me a voice direction and I, and I, and I went for it and they liked it. So the, they kept, they, they, they picked me. Uh, I, I wish I could say I was some sort of give you some sort of insight, grand insight into it, but I honestly don't know the game or even the movies that I've seen. I think I've seen the first, the first couple of films, and I know I auditioned for one or two roles in one of the films. Really? Uh, yeah, That's yeah. That's so didn't, cool. Didn't get it, but you know, uh, it was an honor just to participate, just like the Olympics <laughs> and uh, or the Oscars. Uh, yeah, um, I'll never go to the Olympics or win an Oscar, but you know. <laughs> I will be considered for a role in Transformer. Um, oh, you don't know. I mean, like you could you get an Emmy. I mean, Rob Paulson has won like a lot, and Dee oh, Bradley, and Tom, and, Tom Kenny just won one, uh, at least one, maybe a couple now. Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't. Know, yeah. That's really cool. He deserves yeah. it. He deserves oh, it. That's oh for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you know, Transformers. Uh, trans, of course, in the Transformers franchise, you play Vortex and Transformers: Fall of Cybertron, Mixed Master and Transformers: Dark of the Moon, the video game, and Devastator and Blitzwing and Transformers: Devastation. You've been in the Transformers universe a lot, and I hope right. to hear you come back soon. And thank um, you. To this year uh, will officially mark the ten-year anniversary of Transformers: Fall of Cybertron. Of course. Vortex was your character. Um, my question to you is, looking back now, 10 years has been a decade since you recorded these lines, or even more, shoot, because I know video games and animation takes a while, so sometimes you'll be cast in a game and it won't come out to like, what, like a year later? Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, more so even with animation, it's usually about a year. Wow, seriously? Oh, yeah. That is, I did <laughs> that's a lot, but... <laughs> What was your experience on the game like, and what did you enjoy about voicing the character of Vortex? Well, it's huge. I mean, it's a, it's a, a, a and I honestly can't remember exactly what it, what it sounds like right now, but I do remember it being a, a typical video game uh, um, shredder <laughs> session. You know, Ooh. it's like, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a lot of work and a lot of energy to get that kind of uh, air going through you. And especially if it's an action game like that, uh, lots of yelling. <laughs> so I was, it was probably a two shirt, two or three shirt day. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, I might've taken a nap in the car uh, before driving home. So. Coffee, yeah. I got you. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vortex is a, a very interesting character and just how he fits into the Combaticons dynamic. Um, you said you don't remember the voice. Let me, I can pull it. I actually, I have a clip of your voice. Right, you're for the game. I came prepared, David. I yeah, came prepared. Dude, you're on it. <laughs> because I just, I, like I said, big Transformers fan. I'm interested though. Did you ever watch the trailer when it first came out for the game? Almost certainly I did. I think they send it to me, but I honestly can't remember it. The one with uh, Metro, you remember when it was like this big, you know what, since I have you here, I'm having fun, I'm having too much fun with you, so we're just going to react to, we're just going to react to the trailer together, why not, okay, have, some, sure. have some fun. <laughs> All right, so here is the, this is my favorite. Animated video. blood and violence, uh, now you got me. <laughs> All right, that's now the hook. <laughs> 
<laughs> they should change that to animated uh, Energon and violence, but you know, ah. I'm not complaining. <laughs> but this is my favorite video game in video game history. Like, I'm not joking wow. when I say they made a phenomenal trailer with this. So they made two, but this is the better one. Um, so yeah, I'm about to play it. This trailer turned 10 years old this week, actually. It turned 10 wow. years old this Monday. I love this. I love the music and I just love oh, the sure, visuals. Sure. Wow. Look at these visuals. Yeah. My boy Jazz. They need to put Jazz in more stuff. It bothers me. I want to see Jazz in more. Of course, Nolan North voiced Bruticus when you guys came together. That was him. Right. Uh, he was Bruticus and he was Brawl. He was Brawl too. I remember that. Because Optimus. Do you know who voiced Megatron? I don't. It's Fred Tattashore. Oh, it's Fred. Yeah. That makes sense. You're going to hear Fred again soon in just a little bit. You're getting beat up. Golly. <laughs> I love Fred's voice as Megatron. I love it. I think it's uh, one of my favorite versions of Megatron because I know Frank Welker does his voice and like right. that's what people associate him with. But I think Fred, Fred and Corey Burton are two greats when it comes to Megatron. This will always get me when he transforms. The city transforms. Oh my god. I love this. Wow. That is impressive. Metroplex feeds the call of the last prime. Yeah, that was better. Right? Uh, uh, what a trailer. Really a, great. Yes, and Fred was the city, uh, by the way, if you were wondering yeah. who Fred was. He was that was him too. Yep. And I just I'm so uh honored you know again to just go back just to speak to because like you've been in so many games that i've loved or that has just meant so much to me uh -huh. um especially growing up and especially as i continue to grow as an artist i just love learning about your guys experience with uh the characters and and the films and the games and stuff like that so you said you do not remember the voice for the character all right mm -hmm. so Honestly, not off the top of my head i got you hold on Oh, where's it at? We're gonna pull it up. I'm so excited for you to see it. So here's to steal every last drop. Luckily, you're about I to come up. Mm -hmm. Back. Where is it at? You mean we? There he is. <sighs> Very well, onslaught. You explain the plan. Starscream is played by the Sam Regal. Listen up. Onslaught was Travis Willingham, Blast Off was Keith ambush. Silverstone, Swindle was Steve Bloom, you and you were Vortex. Destroying the bridge. Wow. Swindle. Brawl was Nolan I want you to patrol the area. Quite, quite a cast. I know, right? You guys don't get you to bet. meet one another. Blast Off, Vortex. You'll need to clear a shortcut right, through this canyon to the bridge. Sounds simple enough. Brawl will follow in a drop shot. So, it's like that. Sort of, sort of high pitch. Yes. Really, and he has to. He, in order to get that gravel, you have to project quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, and then they process it. Of course, they put like a metallic a sort of it. sheen to it. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do with a lot of the tr uh, Transformers voices. They filter it up a little bit, not too much. Of course, the original uh, performance is intact, and of course, right. you doing it like you. Of course, you could do it. Transformers, Fallout, Cybertron. What a great game! Happy 10 year uh, anniversary to one of my favorite hey, video games of all time, man. And I'm gonna buy a cake. <laughs> Congratulations to you, man, for being around so long to celebrate these milestones in animation and video game history. It, it, it is truly amazing. It's, um, it's, it's a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm so glad it makes people happy. <laughs> makes my little heart happy, so hey. <laughs> But to go to Transformers Devastation now, Transformers Devastation is really special to me because they brought back a, a large portion of all of the original voice actors to the game and they got to reprise their roles for just one final hurrah and I love that so much. Frank came back as a Megatron, of course, Optimus is Peter, you know, all the time. Peter Cullen is Optimus. Sure. Michael Bell came back for his characters, Dan Gilbertson came back for Bumblebee, and then you come in as Blitzering and Devastator. And you know, what's cool about Devastator is he was on the case, uh, the cover for the video game. 
and it was him, Devastator, Megatron, and Optimus on the cover. So mm -hmm. I'm interested when whenever you're voicing a character and they appear on the cover, what is that feeling like? And to add on to that, what do you remember about doing the voice of Devastator? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have the same problem that I had with with, with the previous. It was a while ago, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, uh, but I do. Uh, in answer to your first question, it's always a thrill. I mean, my goodness, just I, I didn't know that he was going to be such a, a part of the game and such a striking image that they're going to put it on the cover. So yeah, oh, it's it's always exciting. Or you know, getting a toy that's made of of a character I've done. I mean, that's just that's just crazy. You know? Do you have any like Funko Pops or like action figures that you've collected over the years? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They'll occasionally send me stuff. Um, I just I just got some stu uh, stuff recently for the Sam and Max thing. There, there were a nice. couple of different figures. Yeah, those are really nice. Um, I did the Sims. You know, I, I yeah, I did all, all the major uh, male characters. I think there's like ten or twelve of them for herbs. I don't know if you ever played that. Um, no, but my friend plays those games religiously. When I tell you, whenever I'm calling him, he's either on Sims or Call of Duty. Uh, he's on Sims or Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves those games so much. So trust me, I know a little bit about Sim just from him like yeah. gushing go for those games. Oh, yeah, constantly. yeah. <laughs> there, there, that, that was an amazing experience in itself. You know, just no script. It's just all improvised. Yeah. So, yeah. Transformers is a, a massive franchise that's been around since the 80s, but a franchise that came after that that you're a part of is Doom. Um, uh, Doom Eternal as the Doom Hunter. Now, I know you told me that you aren't really the biggest gaming person, but were true. you aware of the original Doom video game? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's so iconic. It was such a huge, huge hit that you couldn't avoid it. It was everywhere. Commercials. Uh, go over to friends' houses. They're playing it. Um, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna go play the guitar. <laughs> so, yeah, and not that I didn't. It, you know, it's one of those things where I have so many hobbies and things I like to do. Right. I, I, I don't have an aversion to video games. I have more a fear of being addicted to them because uh, I, I know how it can get. I mean, my my nephew growing up, you know, and I, I would I would <laughs> my sister is so funny. I would do work at uh, Electronic Arts up in the Bay Area. And they have, you know, like at Disney, if you work at Disney uh, for a day or whatever, you can go into their store and buy stuff really cheap if you're if you're talent. Uh, and they have a, they have a room, a big room store uh, at EA. It's like anything you want. It's like 10 bucks a piece. So I went in, just got this massive stack of video games and I gave them to my nephew for his birthday. And the look on my sister's face was like, oh. Do you have any idea what you've just done? Because <laughs> they were having a problem with him playing too much. I mean, he came out okay. Don't worry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we visit him once a week. No, uh, um, yeah. I for me, I, I'm a huge F1 fan uh, and also uh, um, uh, uh, soccer. So those, you know, F1 racing and soccer, just those two games alone, I'd probably lose my mind and several years of my life just just playing that dang game because i understand with the f1 you can get one of those bucket seat things like full enclosures with the steering wheel and the whole oh my god yeah it's, it's crazy to see the process of like how gaming is continually evolving and how they're adding new things or new attachments to the consoles or or to the right. controllers where you could be more involved in it and just oh, really yeah. feel immersed in it. Then oh. we have VR technology making its way into the mainstay. Like yeah. it's 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 only getting bigger, man. And then the bigger it gets, that means more jobs for you. So hey. I'm excited. <laughs> no complaints, man. Absolutely. It's just more the fear of like, oh yeah, that that's that's a money and time hole that I can't afford right now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'll stick with what I got for now. But no, I grew up playing pinball. I can still remember the, the summer where it turned over to video games. It kind of happened overnight. And this is in the Bay Area. So I, I was playing on one of the up in Berkeley. They had one of the prototypes of asteroids. Uh, it was like unmarked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
it was it was it was tough to get on it uh but when you, it was your turn it was like all right this thing's amazing you know That's what, so do you, what do you call this i ain't got a name yet so <laughs> at least at least it didn't there i i could i could be utterly wrong but i, I think it was one of the prototypes um wow. and uh oh yeah all the uh, all the great pinball games and then most of them were gone by the next summer <laughs> and it was like oh it's video games it's, it's arcades arcade. now yeah yeah Yep. I think about all the classic arcade games like Mortal Kombat and Street oh, Fighter yeah. and ugh. I kind of want to, man, if I had a time machine, I always talk to my friends about this. If I have a time machine, I will go back to the early 2000s or like the 80s, 90s where I could just like yeah. play on the arcades and oh, yeah. do all that fun stuff and I would, I would just I'd eat that up, eat it up. <laughs> <laughs> But to talk about your role in Doom Eternal as the Doom Hunter, this is an original character that they created. So you're the first person to ever voice this character. That's really cool. And it's so scary. He's up there somewhere on the art I've made. You can see the devil horns. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, yeah, did, yeah, yeah. How did you, do you remember creating that voice or was it just like screaming? <sighs> It was a lot of yelling. I do remember that, but honestly, you'd, I'd have to hear it to uh, uh, to know exactly what was going on. I don't, um, think, was, I don't think he really talked. That's why I was asking. Is it no, I think it's just a bunch of noise. It's yeah. a bunch of like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mon it's monster sounds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, those, those. I mean, it, it, I mean, part of, I mean, part of why I get gigs like that for for, for a, a character like that in particular is that just. For whatever reason, I'm born with a, a an ability to make those sounds. Being big, you need to kind of have a large frame and, and diaphragm, and just the, the instrument needs to be larger. Um, but also just the capacity to do it for a while. You know, if they need alternate takes or if they need to have me for a couple of hours, there's now limits on vocal stress. Uh, um, thanks to the union. Uh, it used to be like, oh yeah, there's four hours of just shredding, oh, ripping your throat. <laughs> oh out, god, <laughs> and just utter exhaustion. It's like, nope, two hours max now. <laughs> yeah, That's and, and you can't do it two days in a row. I don't think either. So, because if you do it back to back, like you're gonna cause like vocal damage and like you can. Like, yeah, I, I, knock on wood, man. I, that's never happened to me. Uh, but I know other people who've, who've had nodes and things like that. So, yeah. I, I try to keep in my ballpark. I don't overextend. Hats, have you had some of that uh, that Fred juice? That, uh, that oh yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's just down the just down the road here at the uh, the the, uh, the postal uh, uh, place. There's a guy who sells uh, herbal Chinese herbal remedies for voice and what have you. You can find him online. He's been around a long, long time, and it isn't just voiceover people. It's singers and other uh, you know stage actors what have you people who who are going to use their their voice a lot uh and yeah it works you know the, the chinese culture apothecary and what have you has been around for thousands of years so that's a lot of trial and error i figure they, they can get something right <laughs> get something get something out of that I'm, yeah. gonna to, I'm gonna have to get that but i can't let you leave i can't let you leave without talking about star wars baby oh you've been in a bunch of star wars stuff connect star wars stars battlefront 2 another childhood uh maker i remember hearing your voice you you do the um what's that voice it's it's the republic infantry i guess is what oh, it's yeah. called is the yeah, voice yeah. Where you're like you're going to this planet Geonosha, or you're going yeah, to yeah. Uh, capture this place or uh, heal up you know stuff like that like really right. big commands like that and that was from a while that was from a long while back to 2005 yeah 2005 it's about dang it's uh it's about it's almost it's almost it's, get, it's getting up there it's almost two decades since you've done that game yeah almost yeah. man yeah that is insane that's crazy <laughs> yeah i remember it because i was it, it was uh um what was the name of the company? LucasArts? Uh, no, no. It, well, it's LucasArts, but it's right near it Matrix. What the heck was the name of the that, that did The Sims? Um, oh, dang it. Because they were I in the same. Thinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, it. it begins with an M. I can't remember. In any event, the, their facilities, at least at the time, before um, they moved into the uh, Redwood Shores EA office, 
they had their own office building not too far from uh, Lucas Ranch and Lucas Arts. So I, I was working on both The Sims and that uh, um, Republic video game. So it was, you know, I was, I was like, oh, and, and I had recorded it with this sort of this uh, New Zealander accent, like the whole, virtually the whole thing. Yes, because uh, Tamir Morrison is, of course, New Zealand. And he plays the and old troopers. Yeah. Then uh, George Lucas decided, no, nah, I just want it regular. So we had to record the whole thing again. So yeah. Wow. I, I think it was George. Uh, yeah, I think it came down from George Lucas. Like, yeah, I think we want to do it just with the regular accent. Oh, okay. Could you do the New Zealand accent if you remember? Oh, it's. You know, I mean, it's close. To, you, you don't want to mix up a New Zealander and, and an Aussie. <laughs> Not, neither side's going to like that. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But New Zealander, it's got more of a, I mean, this is not the voice I was using. It was more down here. Uh, it was a sound alike, like from the film. They wanted it. You know, he's down here. You know, I need to talk like this. Yeah. What the f <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's no. very, very, very back of the throat sort of thing. Yeah. Why didn't they keep that? What the? Yo, I'm mad. George Lucas, you have to fight me now. They should have kept that. I'm mad. I'm mad. George Lucas has to fight me now. Yeah. yeah. But speaking of Star Wars, you know, we were talking about this a little bit, but you've done a ton of ADR for the films. Like oh, Solo, the recent, yeah. Rogue One, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker. And in Rogue One, you did the guy who says, launch, and pulls the thing ah, down before Darth That's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was very exciting. Uh, and what a thrill to see it in the film. I mean, Good Lord. Uh, and I grew up a Star Wars kid uh, that came out when I was a senior in high school, the first film. Wow. Uh, you can do the math. I'm 62. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that was the summer of 77. And uh, I remember my girlfriend at the time was babysitting and we took the kid along to the film. It was it was the first release and it was like cinematic screen, huge cin Cinerama Dome sort of thing uh out in san jose and um they were selling all kinds of souvenirs and t toys already for the stuff and i got i got the kid a bunch of this stuff i thought what's that worth now <laughs> yeah no, come on original star with the program from the hey first... kid i'm gonna need you to give that back yeah, I, I, like, need to, I need to pay i need to pay some yeah. more <laughs> yeah it's like i gave a gold necklace to my girlfriend about six months before they we changed the to the gold standard and and it <laughs> It cost a hundred bucks and suddenly it was worth over a thousand and then we broke up. So <laughs> yeah, you never, you, can, you don't see these things coming, but yeah, uh, Star Wars. I mean, it's, um, getting it, getting to see all that footage. Oh my God. The, the scene when princess Leia, God rest her soul gets blown out into, into, into space and we think she's gone. They were very careful trying to um, uh, not show us key plot point scenes as best they could. And the director, oh my God, I'm going up on his name. Ryan Johnson. Uh, no, no. Well, he was there a couple times, but no, the the the, the sound director. Uh, oh, uh, he's, okay. He's also an artist. He was nominated for an Oscar. Oh, I'm going up on his name and, and I'm embarrassed. Je uh, Jeff? Ah, shucks. Oh, well, whatever. Um <laughs> He uh, he got distracted, and I was up doing a, a, a an individual character. Like, I think one of the people, who, one of the people who gets blown out when the when the thing hits is is my voice, and I'm up there standing in front of this huge screen, having never seen this before, of course. And he got distracted, and they let it roll to the point where Princess Leia is getting pushed out into outer space. I'm, no. And he's like, stop, stop, stop the film. And I'm on my knees going like, I'm not leaving here until you bring Princess Leia back. <laughs> Dang it. You can't do that. It's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that oh. must have been. He must have oh, been like, yeah. what my is going eyes, on? <laughs> my eyes bugged out of my head. Like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> oh my gosh do you remember what you did for solo because i love solo that's one of my favorite star wars movies i don't care yeah. what any y'all say i i love that movie with all my heart it's i like so it a lot fun. too uh, uh and um uh glover my goodness as as the young yeah he was so Yo. good 
Perfect uh, casting. Y'all want to talk oh, about yeah. perfect casting? Oh, Him. he had the swagger. He was so good. Um, and uh, and funny, too. My God. Uh, a whole bunch of different peripheral characters. Uh, you know, security guards, uh, uh, stormtroopers. Um, there's a ton of stuff in that movie. Like, there's a ton of creatures and there oh yeah, oh yeah, and troopers. Oh yeah, there, uh, there was a couple. Is there, there's a there's a casino scene in there? I think. Yes, there's. That- I think that when he first meets Lando, they were playing. Uh, What's the card game? Sabacc. Yeah, there we go. They're oh, playing. no, no, not, not, not the card game. There's, what's the one? Oh, no, that's no. You know what? I'm thinking of the uh, one of the Skywalker films. There's oh, a, Last Jedi. Can't tell by eight. That's the same. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. The the, the, the fancy uh, casino. Yeah, I'm some, crit, I'm some critter. Get some critter work in there. Um, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <sighs> but it's one of those things where they, 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 quite often they'll just flash by and I won't. And sometimes there's like two or three people who give it a try and they'll have two or three to choose from uh and you don't know who it is until you see the film and then sometimes it's processed so much it's like i don't know it could have been me i don't know <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah um or if it's in the background it can be tucked up behind uh, the other sounds so yeah it's yeah. A, a, a complete thrill i mean and working with i mean fred worked on that quite a bit as well uh yeah all kinds of amazing people do yeah. you get to work with the actors in there is it just a director Oh, you mean the actors from the film? Yeah. Uh, almost never. Well, the ADR, I mean, like, do you get to oh, the ADR? Oh, that? yeah, we're all we're all on a one big uh, soundstage together. That is uh, so cool. And and sitting in chairs, semicircle around the periphery, uh, like, um, and uh, as we're needed, we'll get called up, and you know, if, if there's foley sort of stuff, like crowds going by, we have to march by the microphones, and yeah. That's so. Cool. Yeah. Well, now I want to transition to, the, transition to the most fun part of my interviews. Weird and wacky. We oh boy, I was, you warned me about this. <laughs> I have no idea what's coming. You don't. You have one minute to answer a series of weird and random questions. No one has beaten the record of 15 questions answered. Although, the who, current who had it? Championship, who, has the, who has the record? It's crazy. There's a lot of it. So, first it was Simon Norfleet, then Matthew Yang King came in. Then Matthew and King, then Kent Williams, he does a ton of the Dragon Ball Z stuff. He <laughs> actually beat it. So you have to beat 15 to, to, to get it. Do you think you could beat Kent Williams? I have no idea what's coming, so I'll, I'll just say, of course. All right. <laughs> I'm about to start the time. Are you ready? Okay, three, sure. Three, two, one. Favorite brand of shoes? New Balance. Favorite color? Blue. Dumbest thing you've done as a kid? Set fire to a garbage can behind a gas station. A song that you cannot get into. Pass. <laughs> Ideal summer vacation location. Oh, uh, with friends, having a barbecue, wherever. Would you favor uh, season? Fall. Would you rather be hot or cold? Cold, because then you can get warm. <laughs> Would you rather be stung by a bee or bitten by a dog five times? I have been bitten by a dog. I'll take the B, thank you. <laughs> Favorite brand of soda? Uh, Coca-Cola. Do you like dessert? <laughs> yes. Do you have some? <laughs> <laughs> Favorite Star Wars movie? Uh, 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 second one. Oh, the timer. Uh, 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 there it is. Uh, what did I get, like seven? No, you actually got 11. You got 11. Did I really? You got 11. Yeah, wow. You got 11. That's you not bad get- for a rookie. No, no, next time I bring you on for your next big project, it'll be awesome. But man, David, you're awesome, man. I've just Uh-oh. had so much fun getting to talk to you and getting to know more about you as a human being and as an hey. artist. And it's just been so much fun. My final question to you is sure. during these times that we live in, there's a lot going on. You know, mm. we have a lot going on around the world. We're still going through a pandemic. Gas prices are going up. There's a war all over the uh, other side of the world. There's a lot going on right now. What would your current message, if you were given a mic and you could say one message or, or a paragraph or whatever to the world during these current times that we live in, what would it be? Love each other. Know that everybody, it's a hard road to hoe for everybody you meet. Always give people the benefit of the doubt. Show love and understanding and compassion wherever you go. 
Y'all heard it from the icon himself. Y'all do that. Do no. <laughs> But no, seriously, man, there needs to be more love out here, more joy and, and, and more hope and more happiness around here. There's so much that goes on and, you know, it's important to be there for your fellow neighbor and to just let them know that it's going to be okay and that yep. we're going to make it through through this stormy weather. Not, n nothing lasts, but, hap you know, sadness doesn't last, you know, happiness comes and goes. This too shall pass. Dead, boom. Couldn't have said it any better. Yeah. So just stay there and and take care of your family, take care of your friends, take care of yourself, man. It's it's really important to take care of yourself and don't beat yourself up too much because you know there's there's a lot going on and yeah. And, you know, Give just, yourself a break. Absolutely. Treat, your, treat yourself as well as you you try to treat your best friends because almost nobody does. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're, we're our own uh, hardest harshest critics and toughest person to deal with so take a breath it's cool oh so meditate meditate <laughs> meditation the water. absolutely twice a day you do that yeah okay let's yeah. go to let me let me know you're a guru hold on <laughs> no, no, there is no guru no method no teacher uh, we, we can all meditate and it's not it's not a religious thing it's uh, i learned at the uh, ucla um uh, the uh what is it? The um, they're the, they're at the forefront of what is known as uh, what is compassionate. Uh, mm, I forget. There's a term for it, <laughs> and I and again, it's slipping my mind. I think I need lunch. Um, <laughs> but uh, they, um, uh, but mindfulness, mindfulness meditation, where it's just a relationship with the human body and the, the mind and the physical benefits of it uh and just reducing stress and uh, I, when i started reading about it online i thought wow that'd be great but where am i going to be able to do that oh and i was living on the west side at the time it's five minutes from my house so i started taking classes there this was 10 15 years ago uh and it's been enormously helpful uh twice a day it doesn't have to be a lot there's a podcast called 10% Happier, I think it's called, uh, where the guy talks about trying to find uh, it's a former ABC news correspondent who had a panic attack on air, live TV, uh, and had to find his way to many. There's a book with the same title, 10% Happier. Uh, but, tr you know, somebody who's never meditated before trying to get into it, and it was difficult, and he had to find what worked for him. and what works for other people he talks about on his show so anyways i'm not going to proselytize but oh, i can no recommend way. it i do i do i do it too i i work with one of my friends who's like really good in it and he's been helping me to get more into it and it does help it's just a real good like it lets you process and stay in the moment and just calm down with all the crazy chaotic yep. stuff that goes on around us but absolutely <laughs> absolutely well, thank you david thank you so much oh. and i i had the most fun with you i love this thank you so much again for oh my great me. my great pleasure just thanks thanks for having me absolutely is there anything you want to plug or promote before we head off um i'm teaching i, I teach pretty regularly uh online on uh, link, in, uh, link in my description now I'll there you go Vo voice flyers. voice caster you can look up on voice caster a uh, couple different levels of uh, introduction and character creation stuff uh, animation and video games and uh, boy, we've had students from pretty much every corner of the world now, including uh, the previous iteration. We just started up a new round. It's six weeks, uh, three hours, Sunday nights. Um, and a uh, young woman was in Kuwait where it was the class was three. It was 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on West Coast. So in Kuwait, it was I think it was 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. But I've also had a. Uh, uh, Australia, where it was like late morning, early afternoon or something the next day. Uh, South Africa, uh, Great Britain, a couple from there, from all over the U.S. Uh, so wherever you are, it can be done and it's fun and you'll have a great time and you'll learn a lot. Absolutely. 
Don't forget to plug your Instagram that you don't use, but you know. Oh my God. Well, <laughs> that's going to change. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I know some people who are so good at it and I'm going to, I'm going to pick their brain and finally get some content going up, but I love checking in with other people and contributing to their sites, but I got to, got to take care of my own. I think I have Absolutely. stuff I can do. Yeah. Before we go, can you give me a shout out or this podcast in the voice of Sammy Stuhlinger? What the hell? Oh, for crying out loud, Jant Moore, Josh, if you're not watching, you're an idiot. <sighs> Class dismissed. Oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, my brain just exploded. David, thank you so much. Have a great one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great one. Peace out, everybody. Love y'all. Take care of each other.